Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at some more of Bandai's absolutely awesome 30 minute missions mecha builder model kits. Once again, as usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want anything you see in this video, check out that link down there in the description. So first off, today we're going to be taking a look at the Spinatio Army type. Now we've taken a look at two different Spinatios already, that is the Ninja and the Samurai. So if you want to check those out to get a little bit more detail on the actual Spinatio itself first, you can do that or we'll just jump right in now. Once again, these kits are simple but effective. When it comes to the build, there isn't really a whole lot of plastic in the box. And when it comes to the Spinatio right here or any of the Spinatios, you get a whole lot more plastic than your standard 30 minute mission. These are actually so easy and so efficient and quick to build that once you've done one of these, you'll be able to build them in no time whatsoever. 30 minutes, according to Bandai, just by following this little sheet right here that shows what parts are used for which part of the kit. And then down here, it just shows you how to put it all together very, very quickly. Now, this is just the robot itself, not the accessories. But yeah, as just for a quick note on the build, it is super simple, super easy to put together. It's plastic on plastic everywhere, so it's rock solid. And these are such a joy to build. I never, never get sick of them. So now jump in into the aesthetics of the Spinatio army type without the armor attached first. So this is pretty much the exact same limber, streamlined and lightweight looking mecha that we would have seen with the other Spinatios we saw before. And if you do zoom in on the face, eh, it's a little bit on the derp side too. So compared to the other Spinatios we saw before, which were kind of brightly colored, red, white, as well as blue and white with the other one, this one has a more militaristic kind of jungle or general camouflage kind of feel. And that means we do have a green and a gray, kind of similar to what we would have seen in one of the first Portanovas. Like I've mentioned in all these videos before, if you buy any of these kits, they work with any other of these kits. And if you buy the exact same colors, they fit together seamlessly. So yeah, this is what this kit looks like without the armor attached. So we're going to fast forward a little bit to what it looks like with the armor on. Now this tactical looking armor really changes it from looking like a very stick thin bot to the mecha equivalent of some dude in tactical armor. And again, we will talk a little bit more about this armor later on. It's just to show a bit of a before and after right here of what this can do. And by the way, the armor can attach onto other colored Spinatios. Lastly, then I will mention briefly about the size. These are 144th scale, so they're exactly the same as high grade Gompla. These are a little bit bigger and a lot of the joints are actually compatible with Gompla, but not universally because these do not use polycaps. They don't universally fit with all the Gompla that is out there. But this is a tall mecha and slightly bigger than your average Gundam. Now moving into the accessories that we get inside of the Spinatio army type. Of course, we have the robot we saw already, and then we have a whole bunch of extra parts. That is a multitude of weapons. That is an assault rifle, knife and shield. We have all the parts for attaching on. This is the armor to make it into the armor type. And then we have a couple of extras in the box as well. That is three extra hands. We've got shoulder joints for if you're not using the armor attached, it keeps the shoulders a little shorter. And we do have this adapter in here, which is a C-clip to a nine millimeter peg. So for the armor today, I am going to attach it on in the standard format. But as is the case with these kits, you can do whatever the hell you want with them because all the parts are interchangeable. Inside of the manual, Bandai gives us some suggestions. That is an alternate build using this kit only. Then we have some of the parts being used with the Spinatio Sengoku type. And there's a little bit of information in here as well about the different kinds of joints, which are mainly C-clips and 9mm pegs. And what you can get out of this kit if you do add some sold separately option kits into the mix. But anyway, as for what is inside of this kit right here, attaching the armor is simple and effective. Like we would have seen so many times before with these 30 minute mission kits, they mainly just attach on via a multitude of 9mm pegs and standard shoulder clips. These all hold on perfectly and the change we get in here is crazy. I thought the Sengoku Samurai version was going to be my favorite Spinatio and that nothing would knock it off this pedestal. But that is not the case. This one has done it for me. It's the green and the tactical armor. It just looks so, so cool. As well as looking awesome, this does add a whole lot more 9mm pegs to the surface of this kit and a multitude of C-clips all over the place, up in the shoulders, down on the crotch, round back on the side skirts. So this is functional as well as looking kick-ass. So now moving on to the equipment and first off in here we get the shield. This is a very simple design, pretty flat up front. Around the back we've got 
a innie hole and as well as an outy peg for whatever way you want to use this. This can be attached anywhere. I'm just gonna go with this standard detachment and that is around here on the back of the forearm using the peg. And this does add two extra nine millimeter holes onto the rear of the shield. And I'll mention it now in case I forget to mention it later on. In the option sets, you do get little caps for covering these holes in case you don't like them riddling the surface of your kit. Next up in here, we've got the knife. This is just one piece, just like the shield, so it is very simple. The detail is nice. We do have a hole as well as a peg on either side. This attaches into the hand super simply. You can just slide it on in like so. We do have an extra holding hand in here, which is a right hand. We've got two standard holding hands, just one right hand that has this extended holding angle. So that does mean you can use this for extended slashing poses like this, but I will mention there are no extra backs for these spare hands. You actually have to pull the back off the hand that you were using before. So we've got, what, five hands, but only two backs. As for the storage of this weapon, once again, this has holes and pegs, so you can do whatever you want with this. Using the peg, you can pop it onto the back of the shield like this, like some kind of retractable switchblade weapon. You can stick it on the booty like this, so that means it can reach back and grab the handle whenever it needs it. Or using the included adapter, you can mount it on the hip with the hole attachment part. So once again, you can do whatever you want with these kits, and that is cool. Moving on to what I guess is the main event and the mid to long range weapon, which is the assault rifle. This is made out of three parts, that is a half and a half to the actual rifle itself, as well as a barrel. This features some very nice detail. This looks really cool. If you're into mecha weapons that are kind of based off realistic weapons, this will definitely be up your alley. Attaching this once again is simple, it just slides on into the hand. We do have a grip up front, which you can attach into the other hand so it can be held with both hands. And because this kit does have such awesome articulation, it has no issue whatsoever holding it in dynamic poses with both hands at the same time. As for the functionality on this, we do have a slot up top that is for using with sold separately sights that you'll find in various option kits. On the side, we have a standard 9mm hole, so you can use this for storing it on the hip just like we did with the knife, or for something else like what Bandai suggests, straight up sticking a big old samurai sword onto the side like some kind of killer samurai bayonet. Also, as usual with the weapons that do come in these kits, as well as a lot of the other aspects of these kits, this is compatible with Gunpla. So if you're one of those like me who's always looking for realistic looking or military looking weapons for using with your Gunpla, this works perfectly and looks outstanding. Once again, if you don't like that hole that is in the side, you can get sold separately caps in the option sets. So jumping on into the articulation, and once again, when it comes to the Spinatios, they are some of the best posers out there when it comes to small scale mecha model kits. We've got a full range of motion at every joint. For the most part, what we have in here is plastic on plastic joints, so this is very solid. We do have some polycap balls in the torso and the hips, which are actually the weakest joints. This kit features some crazy articulation. We've got huge side-to-side -side crunches in here. We've got dropping hips, which are very nicely designed, so we get the full splits, full kicks to the front, anything you could ever want out of a leg paired with some nice knee bends as well as some ankles that can pivot all the way to the front and all the way back. Now, if you do want to see more about what a Spinatio can pull off, then you can check out one of my older reviews because this is exactly what we would have seen before, so I'm not gonna go through every joint individually, but these are absolute posing machines. So when it does come to 30 minute missions kits, off the top of my head, I don't remember if I actually do rankings or not for these, but if I do or if I don't, I just have to say this right here, this variant of the Spinatio to me is Gundarium tiered through and through. It's taken the Spinatio and thrown some ridiculously cool aesthetics onto it, and everything it does, it does perfectly. Anyway, onto the second kit we're looking at today. So next up today, we're going to be taking a look at the 30 Minute Missions mass-produced submachine gun version, which is another extended armament vehicle. Now, I've been really hyped for this for some time. I've had it on my to-do pile for, well, ages. And the reason for that is twofold. This features an opening cockpit, as well as it's such a clunky looking mech. What actually got me originally into mecha, probably way back when, would have been the PlayStation game Front Mission 3. So kind of clunky, small, boxy kind of mecha. Just, I don't know, I love them. However, I will mention with this kit, I am quite disappointed by the mecha mode on this. It's not that great, and I guess I'll get into why. So as for the plastic inside this box, we've got two runners which are unique to this kit. 
And we do have one runner, which is actually a set of joints or the joint runner from a Spinatio, which is kind of funny because the Spinatio and this particular armament vehicle are from two separate factions. The build of this is incredibly simple and intuitive as usual. So if you want to build a whole bunch of these, that you'll get done in absolutely no time. But I will mention that the actual finished mecha to me is a little bit of a disappointment. I'll mention as to why later on, but these extended armament vehicles are essentially just a set of expansion parts for regular 30 minute missions kits rearranged into a mecha or vehicle. So if you take that into consideration that these are just a whole bunch of parts and you have the option of making them as a vehicle, you can't really complain about the vehicle too much, I guess. But yeah, this does pack in some cool features. So let's talk about it a bit. So now jumping into the aesthetics, and like I mentioned already, it was Squaresoft's Front Mission 3 for the PlayStation that really did plant the seeds of my love for Mecha. So something like this that is just kind of boxy, simple, and a definite real robot totally ticks all the boxes for me. But because this does have a couple of issues, I'm not actually going to be doing any articulation on this today because, well, that, that, that's why. One of the hips on mine, it might not be all of them, is incredibly, incredibly loose and kind of undermines the whole thing. But yeah, ignoring that, this is as real robot as a real robot can come. It's just a tank on legs with a big old pair of machine guns and a whole bunch of cool added extras, which let's get into. So first off, I will mention the general structure in here. The arms on this are legs and the legs on this are arms. So basically, the joints have been reversed compared to your typical 30 minute missions kit. The waist on this right here, like I mentioned, on mine anyway, is very, very weak on the right hand side, so it just keeps on falling off. And what is up on the hips is essentially a pair of shoulders, which kind of get in the way all the time. One of the coolest aspects of this kit right here is it does feature a fully opening cockpit, which is not something you usually see on 144th scale Bandai kits unless they are real grades. What is inside of this is very simple, but it is very cool. It's kind of like a pilot seat with a little bit of a console. Very, very simple but it is still nice to have that opening mechanism. So yeah, when it does come to these extended armament vehicles, they are a set of expansion parts for using with 30 minute missions kits. Now I'm gonna use it with the Spinatio we're taking a look at today, but this is more for using with the original faction we would have seen from 30 minute missions, which would have been the Alto, the Esposito, and that other one, which I can't remember off the top of my head, this one. So it does have a boxy style that works more with them than the Spinatio right here, but this, what I'm going to use. So first off, the main body of this particular mecha, the mass-produced submachine gun version, that is actually a 30-minute missions torso. So once you disassemble it all, this is a torso with that opening cockpit. So you can add that onto your kit just by pulling apart your X-Mac, attaching this on instead of its torso, and there you go. Like I mentioned, this is a little bit boxy for Spinatio, but you can mix and match parts with any of these kits. But the coolest aspect about this is you do actually have that fully functioning opening cockpit inside of this torso. And if you don't actually like the big sticky Audi cockpit part, you can actually just take that off for a very standard looking 30 minute missions chest. So continuing through the harvesting of parts off this extended armament vehicle, and like I mentioned, the hips on this are shoulders. They don't make very good hips, but they make pretty cool shoulders. They attach on in the usual way. We have a C-clip attachment point on here. You can either put this pointing towards the front or put it pointing towards the back, which is what I did. So next up, the leg on this kit is also rocking some 30 minute missions arm parts, mainly the elbow and upper arm. So this is the exact same elbow joint we would see on every 30 minute missions kit. So if you pop this open, take it off, you can attach it onto whichever X Mac that you want to, just like this right here for a big armored upper arm. Next up, the lower leg off that leg is actually a, well, lower leg. Now this was looking a little bit on the short side for using with the X Mac, so I decided to just take the foot. So you can actually take the foot off here. It has the exact same joint as the Spinatio because it is based off of Spinatio parts and attaches on perfectly. I'll also mention that the shoulders from this extended armament vehicle are actually very unique because they are a shoulder to upper leg adapter. So if you want to take a leg or upper leg part of a 30 minute missions kit and want to attach it into a shoulder slot, now you can with this. And there's a whole bunch of articulation there too. So next up we have what were the extended armament vehicles arms. That is the machine gun arms. Now I will mention, and you may not have, or you may have noticed, 
that we do have a swinging forward sub arm on the elbow of these. So what I wanted to do was grab that sub arm, attach it onto the C clip that is now on the crotch of the Spinatio in a kind of advance of Zeta waist skirting sub arm combination. But uh, yeah, that really didn't work out. So uh, I'm going to take that off. Finally, then in here, we've got the machine guns. And if you're into Warhammer 40,000, these look very, very similar to an auto cannon. So if you ever wanted to build something with more auto cannons than you can actually grab, well, grab one of these kits and you've got two. So at this point, I did want to attach these onto the back as a kind of back mounted machine gun, but the parts weren't readily available in here. So I did take a look at the runner that comes in here with a lot of remaining parts. And we do have five extra hands. Once again, there is no back. We've got a whole bunch of Spinatio joints on here as well. And I thought this one right here, which would have been a Spinatio knee would be quite useful because it is a C-clip to C-clip. So I took that. Then I grabbed the lower leg section I did not use from the extended armament vehicle. And I attached that all together in a little bit of a chain of parts to create this kind of shoulder mounted scorpion tail kind of machine gun. Now I only did this on one side. You have enough parts in here to do this on both. And this does have a whole bunch of articulation so you can actually move it back out of the way or flip it up forward over the shoulders like a gun turret. That is pretty cool. And lastly, then I will mention what Bandai did show in the instructions about this particular kind of weapon. And that is to take this bunch of kits like this and actually mount these onto a backpack for, well, probably a better mounted variant of what I just did. But yeah, once again, these kits, you can do so, so much with them. And I just took two kits right here and slapped them together. If you grab some of the other ones, the option weapons that are out there, there is no end to the possibilities. These, I've said it so many times, are essentially mecha Lego. You can build what you want. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And I have to say the Spinatio army type is one of the best grunt style quick to build suits I have ever, ever built. And this comes in at about 11 euro, which is what, 12, $13 or so. That is crazy. They are so good and I highly recommend them. As for the extended armament vehicle, mass produced submachine version, it's pretty cool. It's a set of cool options if you want to mess around with your 30 minute missions kits, build a custom or something like that. But as for the actual robot you do build out of box, I found it a little bit on the disappointing side. But anyway, if you do want any of these, link down there in the description, you can get yours from Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more mecha model kit reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.